And what I love about the running charge is it really is a Kenyan affair. You know, it, it, most of our money comes from Kenya, it comes from the Kenyan economy, raised by Kenyans, for Kenyans, um, implemented by Kenyans. And how many NGOs can say that? You know, here, you know, everyone is always looking for handouts from outside. And I don't believe that that's the way we should, we should operate. We have purists, um, like I say, who, who are coming in and they, all they want to do actually as a purist is, is go in a straight line. They think in the rhino charge you can't deviate from a straight line, you have to do it. And that we, as the organisers, have to design it that it can be done that way. Well, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. We set traps all over the place for them. So they're, they're blindsided by the, the purist attitude. The most successful of the strategists, they know they've got to go in a straight line, but they're sensible. If they can see that something is actually too difficult and it's in the way, they'll go around it. And they might not take the theoretical shortest route because they might say, well, actually, that's not practical. And they'll take the second shortest route, which is more practical, and then, and then use that to win. Then there are enthusiasts, you know, with like the girls in pearls, guys in ties. You know, they come every year um, and they, they're serious, they do as well as they can, but they know they're not there to win the whole thing, but they're there to raise money. And they're enthusiasts, they go around, they love it, they, they're driving off-road, they're having a great time in, in you know, un unmodified vehicles, um, but they're raising money for a cause they believe in. And then finally we have the no-hopers, and those are the guys who believe that they can win and they haven't got a hope and and they're my favorite category um, because they're the future winners because they don't they, they're not confined by any rules they just think that they can do everything and so they try more and more and actually if you watch over year over time those no hopers do pop out later on as strategists so um, yeah there's many many facets to how how the event works and the type of people Rhino charges are a breed upon among themselves. Because there is no prize money, it is a purely a pride and macho element. And that's, what, that's what's so unique about the Rhino charge, is it's drawing on those components to raise money for conservation. I think you've got to have an incredible appetite for challenge. Um, you've got to be committed to the cause. You know, you've really got to understand conservation and understand why the Rhino Charge is, is happening. Um, and, you know, it's not easy to raise the money. You know, now, it, it basically, the minimum pledges that people are making are a million shillings. That's a big pledge for anyone to put together. On top of that, you have to arrange your vehicle, you have to get yourself to the charge, you have to look after yourself while you're there. You have to compete and you have to get yourself home and if your car's broken you have to put it on a truck and bring it home. So you know there is there is definitely um, you know a huge financial commitment to taking part in the Rhino Charge. We opened the entries on the 1st of July 2014 um, and they were full uh, within seven hours and so entries for the 2016 event will open on the 1st of July this year. They are on a first come, first serve basis. It's the, the only ones we give um, special credence to are the teams which have raised more than two million shillings. So any team which raises two, more than two million shillings this year will be offered an automatic entry into the following Rhino Charge. People have to come with the forms and the entry um, criteria uh, in person or with a designated person. Um, we, don't, we don't do it online uh, simply because it, it would get awfully confusing to do it electronically um, and probably not that fair. You know, you'd have random people booking from countries that are never going to come just fictitiously and of course, you know, that's not what we're after. It seems that those people who have good bushcraft skills tend to do better because they're reading the terrain, they're understanding the terrain, they're using their eyes, they're feeling the terrain. Guys who come in with computers and GPSs and radios and, and you know we let them all use all of this stuff because our view is the more equipment they're trying to carry the more confused, more inconvenient, the more difficult it becomes and in the end they're dropping batteries and they, don't, they can't talk to each other and they get frustrated, the teamwork starts to break down so you know we can't stop them doing a lot of this stuff so let them do it because actually it doesn't help them.